Today on Game Life, we go deep inside the brain of Greg Kasavin, creative director of the new game, Transistor. So if you like Bastion, you will not be able to contain yourself. So there has been one super giant game, essentially. Yeah. You guys kind of mm. came out of nowhere in 2011 with this game. It, it captivated people. It was, it was an arcade release, and then it kind of proliferated, but uh, now you're coming back. And so Supergiant's second game yep. is, is coming when? Uh, early next year, with any luck. With any luck, and it's called Transistor. Yeah, that's right. Now, I got to play the game at yeah. Penny Arcade <sighs> Expo out in Boston. Yeah, sorry about that. One day, um, I will go to <laughs> Penny Arcade. I think you guys had the longest line at Penny Arcade Expo. That was crazy to us. Yeah, we did not know what to expect going into that show other than, like, okay, we're going to announce this thing, and we're going to let people play it, because we feel very strongly that we want to let people get their hands on it, you know, mm -hmm. in an event like PAX. We didn't know quite how people were going to take it because, you know, with Bastion, we, uh, no one had ever heard of us. But this time around, we didn't know what what all people's expectations were going to be around it and so forth. But the response we got was really, really terrific. Well, the vibe that I was getting was very much like, it was sort of, sort of like Parasite Eve or like, or like Fallout in yeah. the sense of it looks like an action game. You're running around and there's enemies. You could, if you wanted to, right. just go up to those enemies and start going bam, bam, bam right, with right, the sword right. and killing them. But that would that would really result in your death. What you had <laughs> to do is you you kind of like semi-pause the action yeah. and plot out a series of, of, of strategic moves and then unpause and let it all take place. Yeah, right? exactly. We wanted this like more thoughtful experience where the combat could have sort of an ebb and a flow to it. It's not just like you go in and, you know, disaster happens and the dust yeah. settles and everybody's dead. That, that's kind of when we felt like we were onto something. It felt very powerful. And since we wanted to tell the story about this kind of powerful object that you discover, it's like, well, it should grant you some sort of extraordinary ability early on. And yeah, people, you know, responded really well to it. Well, it's a weird game. I mean, it's, oh, it's, yeah. very, it's very hard to describe uh, what genre it goes into. If Bastion was our take on, on like a fantasy-themed world and this is our take on science fiction, it's a game that we also consider to be in the same genre as, as Bastion, like an action RPG. Uh, but uh, this time around, there's much more of a focus on like this more strategic uh, combat system in comparison to our first game. We want to make a world that's kind of filled with mystery you know hopefully we intrigue the player very early on and then we're kind of answering a lot of questions as we go we're very interested in uh synthesizing gameplay and storytelling as closely as possible so let's talk about uh your origin story yeah. because yeah. you're editor-in-chief uh, of GameSpot yeah. for quite a while. So what um, what within you, you know, kind of like prompted the switch over yeah. from editorial to game making? I've been playing games like since my earliest memory. Oh, sure. I've always loved them. Yep. And I always wanted to make them. And from time to time, I would I would try. I would like try to learn programming and I would like, I just hit a wall. But yeah, uh, I mean, I did the same thing. Yeah. I was when I was young, I was like, oh, video games. People make video games. I'm going to make a video game. Yeah. And then discovered when I was like 13. Oh, wait. Whoa, <laughs> it is hard to make yeah. a video game. And then I realized if I just wrote articles about video games, that was way easier. Yes. You could get a whole article done in the time it would take you to do like one, you know, one thousandth of a video game. Yeah. So at that point, I kind of just switched over entirely. That's very that's very similar uh, uh, to my case. Thankfully, a friend of mine who I previously worked with at GameSpot, he knew I had this long-term interest and uh, he, he was a producer at Electronic Arts and they were looking for a new one mm. at the time. And he's like, are you still interested? And I said, yes, and I applied and I got it. So I went and worked on uh, the Command & Conquer real-time strategy games for a while. I was at EA for about three years. Uh, that's where I met uh, Amir and Gavin, who are yes. the co-founders of, of Supergiant. We worked together on, on Red Alert 3 and, and stuff like that mm -hmm. and Command & Conquer 3 before it. We all quit around the same time. They formed Supergiant. I went to 2K. Mm -hmm. um, they just dropped everything and moved into a house and started making Bastion. Yeah. About a year later, I was I was able to join them. And yes, that's, that's where I am now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, again, uh, you are in a much better position than, than you were when you were launching Bastion yeah. because you know, you, you, you've got this hit behind you and yeah. you can do something a little crazier, you know. I mean, obviously, yeah. you don't want this to become your Duke Nukem forever, right? Well, it's like uh, we we Dare you oh, wait. utter the name. <laughs> we we don't intend to. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to take us quite that long. Exactly. At least I hope yeah. not. We've never like worked on a game where people had you know high expectations as opposed to having no expectations. 
but now people kind of know what we're up to. They think they know what we're all about. So right, we have yeah. to surprise them yet again. Because I, I think uh, surprise is very, very important mm -hmm. uh, to just having a positive experience with a game. It needs to keep surprising you. So, yes. um, so yeah, we'll we'll have to see yes. if we could do that again. But what it's do a, they it's say? A you, have your, you have your whole life to write your first piece, and after that, you're on deadline. <laughs> yeah. Between uh, Peter and myself, our Rolodex does not stop at Greg Kasavin here. So, I mean, we, we know a lot of people in the video game industry. So let us know who you want to see on Game Life. It, 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 your favorite video game developer could show up on a future show. Or your favorite developer could be Greg, in which case, just stop watching.